It was so funny. Like, hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. You know my name, not the story. <laughs> I thought I would make a video on my sound life feels life experience and I made a poll poll is it poll or a poll so I did one of those poll things on Twitter and you guys really wanted to see a my sounds life feels life experience and if you have no idea what I'm talking about sounds life feels life um, is the tour that five sauce are currently on five seconds of summer and if you guys have watched my videos for a while you'll know that I absolutely adore five sauce they are my absolute Babes. But I'm, I was lucky enough to be able to go to four of their dates on the Sounds Like Feels Like tour in the UK and originally I only did two and then it was like I have the money let's go to two more. <laughs> I went to uh, Sheffield which was the opening date of the tour in the UK then I went to London which was the 8th of April. Sheffield was the 5th of April and then a couple of days later I went to London which was the second London date and then I thought that was it for me I was like nope I really miss them everyone else has got so many more dates than me everyone's going to Birmingham why am I not going to Birmingham and then I got a message from Clarice and she was like dude should we go to Manchester and I was like sure why not so I ended up getting a ticket for the Friday and then a ticket Clarice got another ticket for the Saturday and I booked my travel, so I went to both the Manchester dates as well, which was phenomenal, but we'll get onto that in a minute. First of all, I want to talk about the Sheffield date. Now, um, when I saw Fire Sauce last year, uh, they had, it was in June, I saw them at both the Birmingham dates, and they hadn't released She's Kinda Hot yet, they released it just after we'd seen them. So everyone else was getting to hear She's Kinda Hot, and then we were like, guys what are you doing like you've just played here why can't why couldn't you play it to us um so this was the first tour that we were going to hear she's kind of hot live well we hoped we would because we didn't really know the set list because obviously they changed it for different countries but um there's been a lot of controversy over that as well but it's five sauce they always put on a good show I went to Sheffield with my friend Clarice, who has been in the videos quite a lot lately, and she's in pretty much every one of my Sounds Like Feels Like vlogs. Speaking of the Sounds Like Feels Like vlogs, I will leave a link in the description, or you can click on my channel, and you can go and see... Well, actually, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description, so you can go and watch my Sounds Like Feels Like vlogs. When we actually got to the venue, it was like, the venue was huge. And then we got inside and it was like, oh my god, this is like Birmingham. It's absolutely amazing. And I didn't really know what to expect of the support, Desiree, but he is amazing. He is so cute and his voice is just amazing. And if you haven't heard of Desiree, I'll leave a link to his SoundCloud in the description because holy baloney, he is so good. And Desiree was absolutely amazing and unfortunately, at that time, obviously, I only thought knew I was doing two dates. So I was like, oh, damn, I don't get to see Broco. Because Don Broco were actually on tour with uh, Bring Me The Horizon at the beginning of the tour. And then they were joining the Five Sauce tour later on. I never got to see Broco to begin with. So I was a bit sad about that. But we had one support, which was Desiree. Amazing. And then Five Sauce came on stage. And obviously, it was the first night of tour. So nobody knew the set list. And they came out to carry on. Out of space, carry on, is like my absolute fave. And it reminds me of my mum. Um, I, for the love of me, I can't remember the set list now. Because <laughs> it's been like a whirlwind tour for me. Uh, excuse my bingo wings. We almost ended up in the VIP boxes. <laughs> which was quite a funny story. Because we had to go through the same entrance where the VIP boxes were. And we had no idea where we were going. And the stewardess, the woman, she didn't really help us. She just kind of walked off with these other people 
and we just kind of stood there like well do we try and get to VIP what do we do and then she came over and she was like oh where are you guys sitting and she told us to go the other way and we were like damn and then yeah and then obviously I went home the, the day after and I was very sad very emotional because it's always a good time with Five Sus and it's always a good time with me and Clarice are together. It's always mental with me and Clarice. And this was proven later on when we went to Manchester, which I will get on to later. And then I was going to London for Five Sus and I went with Hayley, Phoebe and Chloe and Danny, although Danny was sat above us um, in the really steep part of the O2 arena. Um, which I have no idea how she did that, so I commend you for that, Danny. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good time. We went down on the coach, me and Hayley did, because the coach station's literally like there from the flat, and didn't take that long, about two hours. And then I had to get the tube by myself, which was very nerve wracking, never done that in my life. But I'd proper planned where I needed to go and what lines I needed to get to get to Waterloo to find Danny and Chloe, and then eventually found them and then we had to get from Waterloo to North Greenwich which wasn't that hard it was just literally one train we walked out and we were like where is the venue like where are we meant to go and then we walked out with the doors and we were like oh there it is the tv does not do it justice it's massive it's just it's phenomenal it's a really cool venue and um we kind of went to the venue and then we went to the hotel which was like an hour away if you walked it why are all the venues so far away? <laughs> we went and got merch and well I just got the wristband which says I would focus the camera but uh, it says, just says sounds like feels live and it's got the safety pin on it and it's just a um like a pulley one of those buttons you push and you can pull it up and down it was five pound so if you're going to any sounds like feels live dates and you want to know what the merch is and things like that this is one piece of merch they have it in this color which is like orange and pink and yellow or they've got a bluey greeny kind of one and they were five pounds we got to our seats and i knew we were close because we were like block 112 but oh my god we were so close it was like i have never been that close to the stage at a gig before apart from like being in standing so it was the closest i'd ever been like sitting and i just kind of looked down and i was like holy crap we're gonna be have to see callum like without actually having to look at the screen. <laughs> I just looked down and Callum was just there and I was like, oh my God, what? Like, my fangirl heart. I kind of just looked at Chloe and Chloe looked at me and we just kind of went, I'm gonna cry. Like, I'm literally going to sob. <laughs> it was just, that was such a good night. It was so good. And I remember screaming the lyrics with Chloe and, you know, and Five Sauce, like obviously I knew Chloe before like we got into Five Sauce properly. And Five Sauce kind of helped a sort of bond our little group to kind of all get on and you know they said <coughs> oh god i've been talking too much the those two dates were incredible they were so good and i'm so glad i went to them and then we move on to manchester a lot happened in manchester a lot of really surreal and very funny moments happened in manchester and i will reel them off for you now met up with amy and chelsea outside five Sauces hotel and I just missed Ashton and Callum and I was like, I was so bummed. I was like, God damn it, it always happens. It happened in Birmingham, like Ashton was like three minutes behind us or something, like in the exact same place where we'd walked and I was like, God damn it, amazing. The hotel was so nice. Like, if you've seen the vlog, you'll know what I mean. The beds were so, oh. <laughs> beds <laughs> Like, I've never loved a hotel bed more than I have at Park Inn. If you're going to Manchester and you're in that area, go to Park Inn, it is amazing. And then Clarice was going on the Friday with her sister, so I was sat by myself, which I was kind of worried about, but when I actually got into the venue, um, there was this mum, uh, her daughter's friend and her daughter, and they were like, they were proper jamming out, and I was just there like, I, I was like smiling and nothing. then the mum turned to me and she was like, oh, you're here by yourself? And I was like, oh no I've got friends here I'm just like sat by myself she was like because I got the tickets last minute and she was like oh that's really cool and she asked about my life and like where I lived and not specifically but like what area I lived in and we were getting on really well and I was kind of like talking to her daughter and her daughter's friend it was I could for the life of me could not remember their names which is really bad because I want to follow them find them on twitter or something but I can't remember the names 
I wasn't even drinking at the gig. I just can't remember their names for the life of me. But um, yeah, and then during the songs, um, the mum, she was holding my hand and we were screaming the lyrics together and it was really sweet. I'd literally just met them like 10 minutes ago and we were screaming the lyrics along with five stars. Like, went back to the hotel, met up with the Korean, and we were buzzing. We were just like on top of the world. And five stars weren't very well either. Like, Michael and Luke, like, their throats, like, their singing was really bad, not gonna lie, but it was still such a good show, and it always is. Even when they've got like sore throats and stuff, it's still a good show. Which is why five stars are great. We were going out to Don Broco's DJ set at Rebellion, which was. I have no words to describe this DJ set. It was just such a whirlwind night. I apologise if like the camera's moved and stuff. I've had to put another memory card in because I'm rambling too much and using up my memory. But we we got ready in the hotel and stuff and we'd been drinking like in the hotel. Not a lot. We'd had like a couple of shots and a, a bottle of cider and we were we were happy, we were merry, jolly. That sounds like Santa. I don't mean jolly. <laughs> and then we ordered an Uber and we went downstairs to go and get the Uber and then this random woman was in it and she just kind of went, she was like, oh shit, we've stolen your Uber. And, she, and, they were, and we were laughing and we were like, oh no, it's cool, don't worry. And she went to get out and she was like, wait a minute, can we come with you? And we were like, sure. Like Clarice got in the front with the Uber driver and then I got in the back with these two random people who were called Vicky and John, apparently. <laughs> Something really awkward happened to Clarice, which I won't mention because she'll hate me for it. I think I've mentioned it anyway on YouTube, but yeah, she ripped her jeans. And she was like, Shayla, I ripped my fucking jeans. And then like, Vicky heard it and she was taking the piss and it was so funny. It's a rebellion and then Clarice needed a wee, so she went for a wee. And then in the toilet I overheard these girls talking and they were like, oh, do you see Ashton's here? And I was like, oh my god, oh my god, what? So I'd overheard these girls talking and I was like, and then Clarice came out of the toilet and washed her hands and she was like, hey looks up and I was like, Ashton's here. She was like, oh my god, what? I kind of turned around and he was stood at the bar and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and let me tell you, he is, he is, <laughs> he is so attractive. Like, I knew he was attractive anyway, but in person it's like, oh my god, you are adorable. <laughs> You're getting to know the ins and outs of my night. Let me tell you, I'm telling you everything. And I was pretty calm, pretty calm and collected, surprisingly. I thought I'd be a lot more fangirly. Sorry, someone's just come in the door, I think it might be Hayley. <laughs> we went back to the bar and then to get another drink and we were getting around, we were getting shots like every time. Because <laughs> it was like £10 for 10 shots or something. Um, which is pretty good, for pound a shot, I mean. And I kind of turned around and Ashton was like stood right there next to me. And I was like, please help me, what do I do? <laughs> And then she was just like, just talk to him, just say hey. And I was like, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And I felt so stupid, but I kind of like, I took one of the shots, drank it, got another one. And I was like, Ashton, I just tapped him on the shoulder, Ashton, for a shot. And he was like, what's in it? And I was like, I'm not really sure, but I think it's sours, I don't know. And he was like, nah, you're all right, mate. And I was like, okay, thanks. And I was just like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I myself and then Clarice was like oh my god you did it you spoke to him and I was like yeah but I offered him a bloody shot like I didn't say like I didn't say hi how are you enjoyed your show I offered him a shot I always do something stupid in front of people I like why my legacy now I offered Ashton him in a shot <laughs> so surreal like just to actually like see him in person and I know it sounds silly because he's a normal guy he's just a lad you know he's a lad in a band, you know. It was the fact that it was Ashton Irwin. It was like, oh my God, you're like my fave, and I really look up to you. You look up to you and your band, and you're in front of me, and I've just made a fall out of myself. I'm so stupid. <laughs> like, to be fair, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change what I said because it's made a funny story to tell people and a funny story to tell the grandkids. I played Mr. Brightside at like one o'clock in the morning, which. It's really weird. It's usually like an end of the night song. And then we were shouting like, it's too early, Ross, it's too early. And he was like, oh yeah, you're right, it's too early. And it was, you kind of had to be there to, to kind of like experience what we mean, but it was just so funny. And I sobbed like a baby <laughs> because I'd just met Ashton Owen. I'd spoken, I mean, technically not like the normal meeting, <laughs> like, hi, can I have a photo? Like, it was like, do you want a shot? <laughs> wasn't the most conventional meeting of a band member uh, or someone famous but 
it's my story. It's really special to me now. Um, so the gig was amazing that night. It was so good. And every night they come up with a song. And in Sheffield they did, um, she's like Sheffield or something like that. She says Sheffield, it's like Sheffield. She's like Sheffield. But you're gonna sing it like John Mayer. Everyone has to sing it like they're John Mayer. So one, two, three. She's our chef there. She's our chef there. She's our chef there. She's our chef there. Right, that was fun. Which was a really good song. And then London, they did um, "Give Me My Fish and Chips." And what are you playing? I have a problem. <laughs> I have nothing. Oh. Give me my fish and chips. Really good one. And then Luke was like, and a pint. If you've if you've seen the videos and you were there, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> Manchester the first night they did um what song did they do in Manchester? Oh yeah. I can't remember the tune, but it's like Manchester is party capital of the world. It's like Manchester is party capital of the world. Oh, I like that. Oh, too late. really really funny and then the second night they did a cover of Wonderwall because obviously in Manchester Oasis a mashup. <laughs> oh, really how about we don't do a mashup is Oasis from here yeah Oasis I think Oasis from here and you guys know the song Wonderwall oh my god we're not gonna play do that you guys, you guys want to sing it with me right now <laughs> You guys don't know how to play it on guitar, but maybe we can just sing it a cappella. You and us, okay? Yeah. Right, right. And it was it was really spontaneous, but it was really cool. Oh yeah! crappy because the sun's running. Thanks weather! And so the second gig, the second night's gig in Manchester was just as good. It was it was really cool and then during amnesia it was so funny. We had like a sort of like really dramatic moment. Me and Clarice were proper belting out the lyrics and then she turned to me and she went, it's so emotional. I'm jumping in the crowd. And, she, and we were so loud. Like I know you can normally hear yourself but it was like 10 times worse in this venue and I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because we had our own little like area and it was kind of echoey, but I swear to God, right? There was this one bit, Ashton shouted something and nobody else really shouted and me and Clarice proper like screamed and Ashton just kind of went, yeah. And we were there like, shit, did he hear us? <laughs> like, I reckon we were so loud. Like, and I know it's an arena and the odds are we probably didn't, but it, honestly sounded like he heard us and I was just there like winning at life <laughs> yeah it was just it was and it was so sad because it was the last time we were going to see them on this tour last time we we're going to see Jezere until um July I'm so excited for Jezere I don't want to see Broco I mean are they going to slam dunk I don't think they're going to slam dunk god damn it <laughs> uh, it was really sad it was really an emotional night to be honest because we got back to the hotel and it was like what do we do now? Like, we've finished. We've finished Sounds Like Feels Life. Like, this is weird. But we just showed in the hotel and we realised the morning after that f all four or five of us went out second night and we were going to go out and we never did. And, but, I mean, I kind of regret it not going out, but I kind of don't as well because the hotel beds were on point. If I could have took that bed with me, I would have done. It was so comfortable. It was unreal. <laughs> over a week later and I am so sad <laughs> like this has been the worst post-concert blues I've ever had like because I had such a good time like at all four dates it was like 
why do I do this to myself? Like, why don't I just not go to gigs? I won't have the post-concert blues. But, and then it's like, well, no, because I had such an amazing time at all four of the dates. Like, I got to see Danny and Chloe again. I got to hang out, hang out with them. I got to hang out with Clarice a lot on this tour. Um, you know, and that's the thing about bands and following a tour. You get to meet new people. And obviously I met the people who were sat next to me and had a really good time with them. And bands bring people together and... You know, there's people out there that are like, oh, why do you like this kind of music? And, oh, you're so weird. Why do you like, you know, and why do you always go to so many gigs? And surely you can't afford that. And it's like, if it's something that you really want and something that you're really passionate about and you love the band, you, you'll you find the money. That's the reason why, I mean, Five Sauce is the only kind of like big-ish band where I've paid so much money to see them. I just love them so much. And there's always somebody in your life that you absolutely adore and for me that's five sauce that's five songs of summer you know and that's the reason why i spent so much money on them on this tour i have managed to see so many new places and that's the first time that's ever happened to me on a tour because i've never followed a tour for more than two dates before people are saying are oh, you wasting your money because you know it's just a band and it's like I mean, yeah, maybe maybe I have wasted my money, but I've had such a good time wasting my money. <laughs> I've had the, be the best time of my life on Sounds I Feels Life, and I would like to thank my friends, the people that came and experienced Sounds I Feels Life with me, and I'd like, to, and obviously I'd like to thank the band. I'd like to thank Five Seconds of Summer. I mean, you'll never watch this video. Um, it'd be nice if you did, but I know you won't. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank them for like just making music and touring and being a band and making me happy and making my friends happy as well. You know, your songs are the reason why I have some of the friends that I do today. That is my kind of Sounds Live Feels Live experience ramble for you guys. If you liked it, give it a like and if you went to Sounds Live Feels Live, leave it in the comments and we'll have a discussion about Five Sauce because that would be really nice. I love talking about fire sauce. I could talk about them all day. And subscribe if you are new, uh, that would be awesome. You don't have to, but it would be really nice if you did. I would love you forever. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.